Hey guys, my name is Austin Gregory, and in this course, I'm going to teach you how to make a pretty simple questing system for your Unity games. This course is going to build on what we've learned throughout the previous courses in this RPG series. So we're going to take all that and build something cool, making a questing system. So I want to create a new project in the hub here. And I want to call it Quest System. And I want to launch using the latest version available to me, which is 2018.1.5 F1. Template could be 2D, don't need anything special here, and no analytics enabled, so create project. So now in a fresh Unity project, I want to create a scripts folder to keep all of our script files in. And inside of that, I want to create a folder for our questing scripts. Just like that. And now inside of questing, I want to create a new C Sharp script, and we're going to start off by creating the goals of our quest. Now let's talk a bit about what the quest is going to be or what our quests are going to be. And then we'll talk about what the goals are in relation to the quests. So our quests are going to be scripts that simply have derived children that are based on them, right? Basics of object oriented program. We've talked about that a lot in this series. So a quest is going to have a name, a description, a goal that you have to complete in order to complete the quest, and then a reward and that kind of thing. And then from there, we can build variations on that, right? So that's gonna be the parent quest, and then we're gonna have children of that. And that's where we can decide what goal does this quest have? What do you get whenever you complete this quest? You get the items as a reward or whatever, but you may also unlock something. So each quest has to do something specific for a reward, perhaps. Maybe it doesn't for your case, maybe it does for your case. So we're gonna be able to derive from a parent class and then do anything that we want to unique for every single quest that we create, or just create a template quest and just make them all based on that, that kind of thing. But I would imagine you want to have some type of way to create unique quests throughout your game, so we're gonna be able to do that. Also, quests are going to have a goal, like I said. You have to complete the goal to complete the quest. And a goal is going to be just progress. You're gonna start at zero and work your way up towards the required integer to complete the goal. So if you say you have, to, you have to kill vampires, you're gonna to have to kill 10 vampires. Start at zero, kill 10 vampires, you complete the quest. We're also gonna have derived goals from the parent goal class here because a goal can be kind of generic. So if you wanna have a kill goal or a collection goal or a location goal, you wanna be able to set those up with the required parameters. So a kill goal will require an enemy ID. Look for this ID whenever enemy dies. Does that correlate to this goal for this quest? If it does, then I can add some progress to this goal. Or if I collect an item, is that item ID, the item ID this collection goal requires? And same for location, that kind of thing. We're gonna focus on one type of goal in this, but it's gonna be very easy to see how you can take that type of goal and make it work for something else in your specific situation. So we'll start off with the base class for goal. Open this up in Visual Studio. So for goal, what does a goal need? Well, we need a goal number to get to. So if we have to kill 10 vampires, like I said, we need to know that we need 10 vampires. So we wanna have a count needed or a count required, that kind of thing. We also wanna keep track of how many vampires we've already killed. So we wanna have a count current or a current count. We wanna keep track of whether or not the goal is completed. So a simple Boolean for completed. And we also want to know what quest this goal is related to. So we'll have that in there a bit later on. So we'll start with the stuff we know. We want a public int that's going to be the count needed. We want a public int that's going to be the count uh, current. And we want a public boolean that's going to be whether or not we have completed it. I don't know why I'm doing these in capitals. That is incorrect. Normally I would use properties here, but as we know, Unity serialization does not care for those. So I just try to avoid them for the courses because it requires a bit more work to get them to work in the inspector and whatnot. So we're going to avoid that. So that's all of the data we're gonna need for our goal for now. We also wanna have the ability to increment the current count value. So if we were to kill a vampire, we're on a vampire goal here for instance, they want to increase count current by one. So I want to add a method to do that. We'll have a public void, I'll call it increment. 
An increment is going to take an amount as a parameter, right? So we're going to say if we want to increment it by one, we killed one vampire, then we'll call increment and pass in one. And what I want to do is set the current count to be equal to either the current count or the maximum that we could have if we were to try to go over. So for instance, if we have nine and we kill one more, we go to 10. But if somehow we have 10 and we kill another one anyway, before the quest is completed, we don't want to go to 11. We want to make sure that we never go over the count needed. So to do that, we'll use count current, say it is equal to, say it is equal to mathf.min. This will give us the smallest value of two values. And that's going to give us the desired result. So I want the smallest value of count current plus one or count needed. So if we add one to that and it's lower than the maximum, then that'll be the value we get back. If it happens to be more than maximum, we'll get the smallest value, which is count needed. So that's going to handle incrementing the count current for us. Now what we have to do is check to see, do we have enough to say this goal is completed? So if we went over the amount that we needed, so count needed is less than count current, then we have completed the goal. So I want to say if count current is greater than or equal to count needed, then we'll do some stuff in here that will set it to be completed. So I'll say this dot completed is equal to true. This is redundant here, but I like to use it sometimes. And I want to log out once this happens that the goal was completed, just so we have that in there so we can see what's happening, even if we don't have maybe a UI set up yet. Also, I want to make sure that count current is greater than or equal to count needed, and we haven't already completed this quest. So also completed is not true. So if we have already completed it and this happened by some kind of fluke again, that we don't complete it again. So we don't actually uh, reward the player again, that kind of thing. So for now, we don't have a quest to actually work with. So normally what we're going to do, not normally, but next what we're going to do is do quest.complete, for instance. And that's going to allow us to reward the player with items or experience or whatever we want to do. But for now, we don't have that in place, so this is all we have. Now, goal does not have to be attached as a component to an object. We also don't need anything in mono behavior, so we're going to get rid of that inheritance there. And we're going to actually inherit from goal to make a kill goal. So we'll just go ahead and do that really quick. I'll create a new C sharp script and I will call it kill goal. Now kill goal is going to inherit from goal. Now we know what that does from the previous courses. So we don't have to talk about it here. So kill goal will need a couple of things on top of what goal already has. We're going to need an enemy ID. So kill goals, let's say we want to set up a kill goal for vampire on a quest called vampire slayer. All right, so kill goal is going to have to have a thing or two extra that goal does not have. So kill goal has to know what enemy does this goal care about. So if we have vampires and slimes and cows and chickens, they're all going to have some type of identifier. In my case, we're going to use an int to identify them. So a vampire can be ID of zero, a chicken can be ID of one, and that kind of thing. So we want to know what ID this kill goal cares about. So I'll have a public int and I'll have it called enemy ID and when an enemy dies kill goal is going to be active and it's going to check to see does the enemy's ID that died the enemy that died does that ID match the ID that I care about the next thing our kill goal is going to need is a constructor that we can actually pass data into to set it up so I'm going to set up a public kill goal constructor you can also type in CTR Hit tab twice, and there you go. Now the kill goal is going to take in an amount needed, so the amount required that you have to kill. It's going to take in the int for the enemy ID, so the enemy that you're trying to kill, or the enemy that the goal actually cares about. And it's also going to take in a related quest, but we're going to get to that here in a bit when we have actually a quest object to work with. So with this, what I'll do, is we're going to actually set up all of the kill goal stuff within the constructor. So I'm going to say count current. Now this refers to the goal that we're inheriting from is equal to zero. So whenever we're actually initializing it, it's going to start at zero. Then I want to have the count needed to be set to the amount needed that we just passed in here. And actually that is missing an N. So amount 
needed. I'm gonna set completed to be equal to false. We just started the quest pretty much, so we can't actually have it completed unless we're loading from a save file, but that gets a little more tricky later on. And then this dot enemy ID referring to the enemy ID of the kill goal and not to our constructor is equal to enemy ID that we passed in as the constructor. Pretty cool. And the last thing for now that kill goal is going to care about is when an enemy dies. Now we're going to have an event system later on that's going to fire off an event whenever an enemy dies. And we're going to listen for that event inside of our kill goals. That's the whole base for how the uh, kill goal is going to work, for how all the goals are going to work. But for now, I want to set up the method that's going to be listening to that whenever we eventually have the system in place. And that's going to be a void. I'll call it enemy killed. And it's going to take in an enemy ID as a parameter. So whenever an enemy dies, this method will be called later on with an enemy ID attached to it. And I'll say, if this enemy ID matches the one I care about, then we'll increment the goal. If it doesn't, then we'll do nothing. So I'll say, if enemy ID, again, this dot enemy ID is equal to enemy ID, then we will increment by one. An increment, again, is what we're doing on goal here, but we're inheriting from that, so we are a goal. And that's going to be it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start writing our quest script that we're going to be basing all of our other quests on. That's in the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.